Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how to use Steam's controller configuration to make custom gamepad controls for the aisle. First, make sure you have the aisle selected. Then click the gear under the picture to the right of the play button. Then properties. Select controller and then make sure enable Steam input is selected. This will make sure that your new controls will override the ones that the aisle has set. Now we need to use big picture mode. There's a few ways to do this. Through the view menu, right click the Steam icon in your taskbar, or the little icon next to your username. Loud warning, it will play loud intro music as the big picture loads up. Go to your library and find the aisle. Go to manage game, controller options, and make sure forced on is selected. This will make sure the controls will always be on. I think this works outside of big picture mode too, but editing controls with big picture mode is easier than without it. So when you're making adjustments, use big picture mode, and when you're happy with your loadout, you can just run the aisle without big picture mode. Okay, now you probably don't have a gamepad set up yet, so go to Browse Configs and select the recommended config. This basic configuration acts how you would expect controlling a character would act. Left stick moves the character, and right stick moves the camera. If you don't touch anything, your controls should use what is bound in the aisle's gamepad settings. Now, I'll show you how to make your own controls. This is what I use. If it's different from what you are used to, just follow along until you understand the basics, and then adjust to fit what is comfortable for you. First, I'll bind the face buttons. I use scent or sniff for the top face button. I'll type in this bar here to make a label and then click on the key I want to bind to this button. For the right face button, I'll set that to rest. Bottom button is used for jump, and the left is used for eating, drinking, and wallowing, and picking up things. Now how do you pick something up if the left button is already bound to E, but pick up is G, a different activation type? I'll set the eating button to a long press, since you press and hold E to eat. Then I'll add a new activator, and leave it as a regular press and bind it to G. Now if I tap the left button, I can pick up bodies or fish or press and hold to eat and drink. I'll do something similar with rest. As it is now, if you press and hold the right button, it won't start your safe logout timer. So I'll add a new activator, set it to long press, and bind it to H. Now I'll set right click stick to crouch. I'll put four of the five calls to the D-pad starting with D-pad up and going clockwise. Broadcast, friendly, threaten, and fear call. Left stick click will toggle run. Left bumper will be toggle walk.
Left trigger will be run. Right bumper will be mouse one attack. Right trigger will be mouse two attack. Start will be the escape menu. Options or select will be the insert or stat menu. If you remember from earlier, I said I can only bind four out of the five calls in the game. With pretty much every button accounted for, how do I add this fifth call? I'm going to show you how we can bundle up all the call bindings into one button by using a radial menu. I'll show you two ways of creating a radial menu. First is by using an action layer. An action layer is a copy of the current control set. We can edit the controls and they will override those on the current control set without overwriting it. We'll still have our unchanged control set after we turn off the action layer. It's a little hard to describe, so I'll show you instead. First, we'll create a new action layer. I'll name it Default Alt. Since I didn't name the action set, the config will name it to default. Click Default Alt, then click the right stick options. Change the style of input to radial menu. I'm going to bind four calls to four directions. That will make it easy to use since you would only need to move the stick up, down, left, or right. That way we don't have to search for what call we want to use. I bind the social or F call to right stick click. You can set icons to each radial menu item too. Here I have custom icons I made. I'll put a link in the description if you want to find out how to make your own. If you want, you can use the icons that already come with the Steam config. Now we need a way to access the action layer. First, let's reset the D-pad bindings. I'll use right D-pad to activate the action layer. And then select these three dots. This will allow you to change the action set or action layers. Set that to hold action layer. We want to switch to another action layer, the default alt layer. Now when we hold down right D-pad, our right stick will act as a radial menu and we free up the other D-pad buttons for something else. The second way of doing this is by using Mode Shift. First, let's clear left bumper of any bindings. We'll use this button to change right stick into a radial menu. Now we click the options for right stick. Click the box under Mode Shift. Change the style of input into radial menu and bind as we did before. Then, click the box under Mode Shift button. This will give us a handful of buttons to use for Mode Shift. D-pad isn't listed here for some reason, so that's why we are using left bumper. When we back out, we can see that left bumper has a new binding on it, showing that when pressed, it will turn right stick into a radial menu. We can adjust this further by setting it to a long press.
Now that we have our controls set up, let's test them out. The joysticks act like we expect them to. The left stick controls the character, and the right controls the camera. If I click in the right stick, it will perform a crouch. The left stick will toggle run. Now there's a bug where if you run using left trigger, it would also activate an attack. This is because the aisle has the trigger pre-bound to attack. The fix is to turn analog input off. As you can see here, when the analog input is on, when I run, it will also perform an attack. So turning off analog input will let you run without attacking, unless that's what you want. Continuing the test on the controls, I press the A button and I jump. Tap the B button and I'll rest. Hold down B button and I'll safe log out. I'll go get some water. I don't have the air brake bound, so this is going to be a messy landing. I usually have toggle walk or air brake bound to right stick click. Later I'll show you a control scheme that I currently use. Now, I'll hold X to wallow and drink. Let's try to find some fish. I'm used to a different setup for flight, so this is going to be a bit difficult for me. Okay, now remember, X button is not only the eating and drinking button, but if I tap it, it also acts as a pick up and drop button. And if I hold it down, I'll eat. Next we have the calls. Remember that I put them on a radio menu. All I need to do is hold right d-pad down and rotate the right stick to make a selection. When I have the call that I want, I release right stick to activate it. For F call or social call, just click the right stick in. If you want to use the radial menu using mode shift, Hold down the left bumper and do the same thing. Okay, so it's not working. So what we'll do is go into controls, 
then right stick, then mode shift menu. And change the menu activation type. Let's try button release. Social call works. Try button click. I would think touch release would work. Oh, you need to release the left bumper. That's not intuitive. Let's try always. Okay, that works. The problem is that it immediately does a call. So you need to remember which direction each call is in to avoid selecting the wrong one. Now I'll show you what controls I've been working on. I have a menu action set that activates when it detects a mouse cursor. It turns the sticks into a mouse cursor and the A button into a mouse click. The bumpers turn into scroll wheels, which is helpful in scrolling through the server list. But this action set acts up if I pull up the Steam overlay without pausing the game. So I've set the X button to go back to grounded controls in case that happens. Next, I have controls for when I'm playing Pteranodon that activate when I press down D-pad. To take off, I pull back on the left stick. What these controls do is act like a flight simulator control. I pull back and I ascend. I push forward and I descend. And the A button is now the air brake. I need to remember to press D-pad down again to move normally. Otherwise, I'll crouch and I can't move forward. I like these controls because it feels more natural to me. I can fish better with it, and it feels much more intuitive than tapping the A button to ascend. I feel like I have more nuanced flight controls this way. The gator control is almost the same as grounded, so I think I'll delete it. So to delete it, I click on gator action set, manage action set, and select delete. To make the menu action set work when there is a cursor active, go to manage action sets, and I have set menu action set to switch when the cursor is shown, and to go to the previous action set that I was using before the cursor is hidden. Since I don't need a crouch button, that leaves left bumper open to be used for mode shifting. So another control I was testing out was when I press left bumper and move to the left or right while flying, the camera would also go to the left or right. When I hold left bumper and move to the left, the camera moves with me. Same with moving to the right, the camera follows. What I was trying to get was a tighter control scheme like you would find in flight simulators. This 
is an example of experimenting and finding out what works and what doesn't work. I encourage you to try new things out and see what works for you. I didn't notice this before because I have it set already. But if you want a faster camera control, switch to joystick mouse. You can then up the sensitivity here and fine tune it in the additional settings with the stick response curve. Now the camera is very snappy and very fast. Compare this to this. Okay, that's what I have for this video. I'll provide some links in the description for more information on the Steam Configuration Program, and a link to my controls for the aisle in case you want to try it out. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps.